Hello everybody, this is Gosha from Cosmic Agency. How are you? How are you doing? It has been a while since I last spoke to you. Uh, I was pretty busy in the last days and um, but I'm back. That's, that's what's uh, very important here. I want to be back. I want to continue doing my work. I have a lot more videos to share with you. So much more to come and so much more information. So I'm very happy that you are enjoying everything so far and that you are with me and welcome to all the new subscribers by the way today i want to talk more about the immersion program uh, that many star seeds use to incarnate here on earth and we are going to go a little bit deeper into the mechanics of the process and how it actually works technologically because it is a very technological process, apparently. Uh, it was very interesting for me personally to go deeper into this, into this topic. Uh, why? Because 20 years ago, long before I even knew about the extraterrestrials and about all this metaphysical realm of things, uh, I, have, I have sensed, I have sensed myself on some other deeper uh, level from which I was sensing, I was projecting myself into this realm. So in a way it was like in the movie Matrix and that's why I loved this movie so much when I, when I saw it, uh, when he puts the glasses on and he then projects himself into the virtual reality world. I really, really, really intensely felt that this body is not uh, really uh, fully me. And although on many levels it happens for every one of us that we are just interfacing with our higher selves, higher energetic beings of ourselves, uh, but I, I felt there's something more to this, there's something else going on, something is, something is wrong. Like I'm really literally beaming down from some other level of myself, sitting somewhere in the chair with, with cables of my, around my brain and just transmitting myself here. That's how it felt. So I was personally very interested in this, in this explanation because I'm trying to determine whether it is the case with me. Who knows? Okay, so the first question I asked um, was this. But now, so you can understand the question. Let's imagine there is a Tagetan Pleiadian uh, man, man, for example, called, uh, I don't know, Angel. Okay, it's, it's a name, Angel, for example, in Spanish. And he decides to incarnate on Earth using the immersion technolo technological chamber and incarnate here as John. So my question was, how does John's awareness get transferred to this body, to this level? Um, is it like his soul travels to be here and to experience 3D existence of John? Or, or how is that point of awareness moving and shifting exactly? So this is where we started talking about this subject. This is her speaking now. Okay, your present body is a point of awareness and it's also working at a precise set of frequencies. That set is a match to angel, to angel, to angel being, to angel take it and play it. So the reason angel is in this body of John and not in another is because it is tuned, the body is tuned to angel's exact soul consciousness frequency. It's a match, like a radio tuned exactly to one station. Angel, in this case, is the station that transmits. The body of John is the receptor and it's tuned to angel and not to another person. Remember that you are always working through your body. You are not in your body and most definitely you are not your body. So in this case, this topic is a bit difficult for me to understand, but I am, I am sensing it. I am sensing it. Um, so the, the angel is the transmitter, the uh, John is the receptor. They, they are somehow tuned to each other. Uh, well, actually, it's more John, the body, tuning into the radio transmitter angel. So I asked, where is John's soul? I still didn't understand that part. She says, no, it's the same. They are the same person. Uh, in this case, they are a match. It's a match because the body of John was built to be a match for Angel. Was built. 
What, what does that mean? So she says, this is done sometimes artificially before birth. And it's one of the reasons for abductions, especially of pregnant women or women who will later become the mothers of a high vibrational star seed. They need to have their body modified to accommodate the soul in order for that soul to be a match to the body. So they have to attune the receptor, the body, so it can tune into the transmitter, angel level. Uh, so I said, so what is a soul in all this? How do you understand the soul? A point of attention, she says, a standing wave crest, a holographic fragment of source, the whole. And as a holographic fragment, it retains all the characteristics of the whole. It is the whole. In other words, from the point of view of the individual point on the standing wave, what we could call an individual soul, it is source itself. Okay, so I keep asking, but how does it get transferred? His point of attention, his standing wave point of attention from angel to down here mechanically. I wanted to know the technological process. I, I ask, I don't get how it is done technologically in the immersion transference or of the point of awareness. Okay, so she responds, it's like a high energy transmission. From the point of view of source, there is no distance. It just is everywhere. You just have to tune the receptor to the frequency of the transmitter and you are connected. In the case of a technological immersion, uh, the body of John is not really there as such. It's just a holographic matrix projecting he is using as an awareness point. Like when you are in a video game, it's your senses that do the transfer of awareness back to the transmitter. John is really in a ship right now. It's just that all his senses are being fed with stimuli that convinced him that he is on earth. You are not moving anything in the process. You are just, uh, uh, the angel is just looking at the point of awareness, John. But as distance is also an illusion, all he is doing is just looking. So it depends where you look, that's where you're gonna have your experience. Like, or as if you had a video game screen in front of you. Angel or anyone else is a frequency. When there is a match to it, it will connect like a radio. A body also has a particular frequency. It must be a match to the soul transmitter frequency. So I keep asking, but what is the process exactly? Do I put on some cables on my brain to, to, to transfer here or, or what? What is the technological mechanical procedure exactly for Angel to, be, to, to experience life as John on the 3D Earth? So this is where she explains. You go into an immersion chamber. You can be aware, but it's better if you first are aware and then you go to sleep as your actual body doesn't need to be functioning as awake. Your senses are given artificial stimuli, sound from a speaker, visual effects from a hologram projector and tactile stimuli and so on. But this is done with neuronal interface or artificial telepathic transmission for you to sense a new reality. And it's coming from the immersion computer. You don't need cables. It's all done with you in a soup of manipulated precise frequencies stimulating your brain cortex. So that's basically what it is here at this point. Um, quite insane, but it actually explains a lot of my own feelings about myself. It does, it does. Okay, then she says, if you go into the immersion chamber aware, it's only for a short period of time like for entertainment or for a contact immersion, like visiting your family in Temer while on a ship in deep space. You are visually there with them interacting as if you were in their living room. They see you as a high definition hologram at home, but they know you are not there. But it's much better than a phone call. The hologram is so precise, sometimes you cannot tell it apart from the real. So yes, 
If you are aware, it, well, I'm not going to repeat, it, it was just said, but just a short summary. If you are aware of the immersion, uh, then you are doing this for entertainment or to visit your friends, uh, your family, uh, while you are traveling in deep space expeditions. Okay, so then I asked, what about the souls that are coming, not from the, from the immersion program, but directly from the source? They didn't have this technology that moved them to come here, to tune in here. So is it the same scenario for them? She says, most people do go into 3D directly from source. They incarnated there. Let's call them the Gaians. The technological approach to go in there is more of a hack using advanced computers. We have an immersion technology adapted to project yourself down there as you would with a phone call to family in Temer. My question now. But are the bodies of the ones coming directly from source more real than the body of, of John? Because if he's holographically projecting himself and he's not really here, uh, doesn't mean that his body is less real because I kind of I kind of feel that I don't know how to explain it but I kind of do not don't I don't feel real here yeah in some way I do actually um, myself my essence my 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 being feels real uh, on a very deep level but like this interaction with with this something is not completely fully real. So I asked, are the bodies of the ones coming directly from the source more real than John's? Well, as Varu being Varu, she always says, there is no matter. There is all mind. It's all ideas. So she responds, none are. No bodies are real. It's just energy. The reason you think a table is hard and you cannot make your hand go through it is not because there is hard matter there. It's just the energy frequency of the hologram table repelling the energy frequency of your hologram hand as two magnets repel each other when in a specific polarity creates resistance but it can be overcome with mind consciousness so here i am i am expressing what i just told you that i feel like i am transmitting from somewhere and maybe comparing to let's call them guidance they don't necessarily feel that uh, because mechanically they are not projecting uh, from any specific ship so their point of awareness is doesn't seem to be as divided as in my case I feel I feel a kind of schizophrenic sometimes I feel like there's only a part of me here projecting but the fullness of myself is somewhere else doing the transmission at the same time uh, so the guidance don't feel that uh, in a way their whole point of awareness is here no um, so she says Exactly, yes. That's the why you've always felt something was very wrong, because it's very possible that I'm in this immersion chamber. Uh, inter interesting, uh, in this immersion, immersion chamber, there are all kinds of settings, even settings to uh, pain, tolerance to pain. So if the settings are uh, too high, artificially too high, then you will experience too much physical pain, for example. So it's, it's very, 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 very interesting. Um, I, this, 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 this seems to have uh, a lot of interesting uh, um, implications. For example, if they are going to project, it could mean they could project all kinds of matrix people with no tolerance, no tolerance to pain uh, for whatever agendas. Just thinking about all the possible implications and scenarios of this. Well, she's also exp see here explaining that this is a very high technology and it's very difficult to, to, to explain. She says, I'm only trying to explain very high technology with easy concepts for you to understand, but English is very limited as a language. Okay, I also asked what would happen if John decides to get extracted or go on a ship? This is his 3D transmit transmitting self and what would happen? His body would just evaporate or what? And well, and she explains also, Zvaru being Zvaru always uh, explains everything from the highest perspective, very holographic, uh, wide perspective. She says, all bodies are really holograms here too. The problem is comprehending what parts the moon are projecting as a hologram and what parts you are making with your consciousness. In this case, in 5D, 
you are also a hologram. She's saying they are also holograms. But it's being generated by a consciousness field coming from the other side, the ether or the spirit world. So it's a more natural, let's call it that way, hologram. That's why our DNA here is not complete in 3D. It's a only a 3D representation of our real DNA in a higher plane. So if John decides to be extracted or he, they decide to extract John, and if a ship 5D goes there for him, it says the ship will be immersed in 3D and will also be 3D unless it has its shields on. So John goes into the ship and the ship takes his 3D body to 5D outside Earth. And now his body is translated to 5D. This is done because the ships act as a frequency translator. The engines basically are that exactly frequency translators. It's how they work. So they are going to translate the 3D body into the 5D body. But John's body wouldn't be 5D genetically right away because of his ideas and mindset. That's why the consciousness and transforming and adapting our mentality to 5D ideas and frequency is very important because this is what's, what's going to determine our genetic transformation as well. So she says, I'll repeat that. But his body wouldn't be 5D genetically right away because of his ideas and mindset. As that changes along, so will his body. But it takes like three months to adapt. So very interesting subject. I'm going to just leave you with this. I have so much more to talk about in the next videos, but uh, this topic I just wanted to dedicate to this immersion topic. And I wanted to share it with you because I know a lot of you probably have these types of feelings. I, I'm not the only one who has these feelings, like something is wrong, we are not really here, we are transmitting from some other level of ourselves. Uh, so this is video for you. You're not crazy. You're not alone. This technolo technology is real. It is real. Uh, and well, in a way, it's exciting, at least for me. It's like a greatest adventure, you know, that we decided to embark upon um, among so many other adventures. Just existence itself, in a way, uh, projected from some source level is an adventure in itself. And this is like an adventure within an adventure within the adventure. <laughs> so enjoy your adventure. Everything will become clear as we, as we move along. Uh, more information to come, more insights. Uh, more wisdom to be shared, more, lo more love to give and experience. So thank you again so much for watching and until next time, the next video, I think it will be, well, I think it will be the mixture of different questions, different questions and answers, kind of like a frequently asked questions uh, topic. Later on, I uh, will talk about reincarnation, what will be the chat with Zvaru about reincarnation. And next, I'm going to share with you the interviews with Rachel. Rachel was the one who actually spoke to Eisenhower and uh, they were the girls behind the Vril Society in the Second World War uh, or somewhere around that time. Well, thank you very much again and until next time. See you. Bye bye.